Today we're going to talk about the diagnosis and management of cervicogenic headache. The inability to find a definitive structure or pathology as the cause of cervicogenic headache has led some to believe that CGH does not represent a single pathological entity, but rather a pain syndrome resulting from the nociceptive stimulation of almost any structure in the cervical spine. The next two slides contain a list, some of the pain generating structures believed to contribute in some way to cervicogenic headaches. The main contributor is believed to be the facet joint, which are innervated by spinal nerves C1 through C3. The C1 through C3 spinal nerves feed sensory input into the trigeminal nucleus, resulting in a unilateral ram's horn pattern. Other contributing structures are the vertebral arteries, uncovertebral joints, and the dura. Posture, whiplash, and range of motion are some pain generators as we can, as PTs, we can address immediately. Postural education, manipulation, mobilization, they'll all help alleviate the pain associated with these impairments. Research is conflicting as to whether or not range of motion is a true contributor of pain. Harm and risk. Although prevalence is low, about 1 out of 100,000 in cervical artery dissections, it's important to realize neck pain and headache may be possible precursors to posterior circulation ischemia. Screen for red flags and vascular risk factors. Prognosis. In those experiencing headaches, there is a 96% lifetime prevalence and point prevalence of 16%. Cervicogenic headaches make up a small percent of headache types, but it is important to realize that those with cervicogenic headaches have substantially lower quality of life. The prognosis for those participating in a manual therapy plus exercise regimen showed the following outcomes maintained at 12 months. Those in an active group experienced a 50 to 100% reduction in frequency of the headaches. Those in manual therapy and exercise experience significant reduction in headache duration and a 93% reduction in medication use. It's very important to get a thorough history to rule out headaches associated with other pathologies that are not of musculoskeletal origin. You also should get a very thorough subjective information and do a, a thorough physical exam. Trauma and migraines are two that you want to pick up on. In the next few slides, we describe the diagnostic criteria by Antonasi et al. with the unilateral headache and symptoms starting at the neck and progressing to the head being 100% sensitive. He also noted that uh, the po a positive response to the greater occipital nerve or facet block is highly specific whenever ruling out other unilateral headaches. It is our job though, as physical therapists, to give a conservative intervention so we can prevent this type of treatment. This slide describes the nature of the symptoms and notice five out of seven pooled diagnostic criteria should be evident. This table here represents the diagnostic criteria that was outlined by Antonasi. If you look to your left, you'll see the Roman numerals that are outlined in red. Those represent the seven pooled criteria that were referred to on the previous slide. And the sensitivities and specificities of each of the criteria is noted on the right side. In Child's Guideline for Neck Pain, he notes deficits in cervical range of motion, segmental, segmental mobility in the cervical region, and deep neck flexor weakness. Ogens and Hall tested the diagnostic validity of the cervical flexion rotation test in atlantoaxial joint in the atlantoaxial joint and found 91% sensitivity. 90% specificity with a diagnostic accuracy of 91%.
The Zito et al. study found similar findings as Childs, but adds upper quarter tightness and weakness in the muscles mentioned here, which include the upper trapezius, levator scapula, scalenes, and suboccipital extensors. For the intervention, uh, the manual therapy and exercise group included a manipulative therapy treatment by Maitland et al., which consisted of low velocity and high velocity manipulation techniques. The therapeutic exercise portion of the group, uh, the patients performed low load endurance exercises for neuromuscular education of deep neck flexors. They also performed scapular retraction and adduction exercises, particularly targeting the serratus anterior and lower trapezius muscles, and also postural correction exercises. The patients were treated to sit with natural lumbar lordosis while gently keeping the scapulars, scapulas retracted and adducted and kept the longest coli engaged to promote the most efficient posture. The snag by the Hall et al. study showed a 54% reduction in headaches using this technique compared to controls with, those, with these parameters. They used it once per day with three 10 second holds to address atlantoaxial rotation deficits. Here you can see that the headache duration was most impacted by the manual therapy and exercise group, which showed the greatest effects. Manual therapy and exercise did not significantly reduce the headache frequency or intensity more than either treatment alone, but for headache duration, it proved quite successful. Here you can see the mean changes from the baseline of each outcome group. You have the control, manual therapy, exercise therapy, and then your combined treatment. And if you look at the duration, you can see a much greater effect. The frequency and intensity, neither group really showed superiority over the other or made a clinically significant difference. On the, in the treatment group, 72% of the participants gained at least a 50% reduction in their headache frequency. 35% of these experienced a complete relief. The evidence results show that manual therapy and exercise are most beneficial for reducing pain produced by palpation than therapy alone. There's a 10% better chance of achieving a great outcome with combined therapy. Your clinical bottom line is a thorough history, patient signs and symptoms, and a physical exam is essential for an accurate diagnosis of CGH. Manual therapy and exercise have shown significant effects on decreasing neck pain and headache frequency. Here are our resources, and I hope you enjoyed our presentation.